So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install and wire up an outlet and a light switch in the same box. Now in this particular installation, I'm going to be doing it out in my shed, so I won't have any drywall or anything to deal with. However, it's going to be the exact same wiring as if you were going to be doing it inside of your house or your garage as well. Now, I've seen a decent amount of information published out there and also some videos that have been done showing how to do this. However, in my opinion, they're not done quite right. So I'm going to quickly show you how to install and wire this up. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. Now, obviously I'm adding everything new as this is a new work box. So I'm able to just nail it in. But if for instance, this was a drywalled wall and we were taking a single switch and then adding an outlet, obviously we would have to get a double gang old work box and we'd have to cut out a larger hole for it to fit in there. So the first thing I want to do when dealing with electrical is go to the circuit breaker that's supplying the power to whatever I'm working on and turn it off. So now I've got the circuit breaker off. Now I just want to confirm that I don't have any electricity going to any of my wires. So when I was pulling my wiring, I wanted to make sure that I had at least six inches between the ends of my wires and where the wiring enters into the box. This is per code and just making sure that we have plenty of wire to work with. And now I'm going to need to make up some pigtails in order to wire all of this up. So I'm just going to take some of my extra wiring that I have from wiring up this box. And then I'm going to cut off some small sections to be able to make my pigtails. So I'm going to need two ground pigtails. I'm going to need one white neutral pigtail, and then I'm going to need two black pigtails to help supply the power. Now, one very important thing to note now that I've got my pigtails made up is you want to make sure that you're using the right sized wire when making up these pigtails and also using the right size wire if you're running new wiring like I'm doing. So if, for instance, you have 12 gauge wire running into the box that you're installing this on, or you have a 20 amp circuit, you probably don't want to be using 14 gauge wire to then connect all of this together. It's going to be undersized for the circuit. So if you go to pull something that pulls more power than 14 gauge wire is capable of handling, the circuit breaker is going to let it go through, but your wiring is going to be undersized. And if it's undersized and too much is being pulled through it, it could be a fire hazard. So definitely make sure that when you're not just making your pigtails, but also running your wiring like I'm doing, that you are running the correct wiring for that particular circuit. All right, so now that I've got all of my pigtails made up, now I can actually start wiring it. All right, so currently I have my wires separated. Down here on the bottom, all of these wires are my line wires. These are what are bringing the electricity from the electrical panel and supplying the power. Then up here on top, all of these wires, these are my load wires. These are the wires that are then going to supply the electricity from the light switch to my lights. And the first wires I'm going to be working on are going to be the ground wires. So I'm just going to take both of my ground wires that are coming out of the box, put those together. Then I'm going to take my two ground wire pigtails and combine those with my two ground wires coming out of the box. Then once I've got those fairly well lined up, then I'm going to take my linesman pliers and I'm just going to twist them all together. And with these ground wires, I'm really going to twist these down to where they create a nice bond. Now that I've got those all twisted together, now I'm just going to take my wire nut and I'm going to tighten it down on top of those wires. And I'm really just going to keep twisting until I really can't twist anymore. Now that those grounds are done, now I can tuck those into the back of the box. So now that my grounds are done, now I'm going to start working on my white neutral wires. So again, I'm just going to take those two wires that are coming out of the box that are both white neutrals. And then I'm going to take my one pigtail and put it together with the two neutrals coming out of the box. And then once I've got those neutral wires starting to twist together, then I'm just going to take my wire nut and tighten it down on top of them. And now I can push my neutral wires back with the ground wires in the back of the box. All right, so now all that I've got left to wire up are my two hot wires. So now getting to the black hot wires, this is where I need to know which one of these wires is my line and which one is my load. Now, if you don't know which one is which, this is where you would need to have your circuit breaker on. And then once it's on, then you can take a multimeter or a voltage detector and figure out which one is supplying the power. But since I know that this lower wire is my hot line wire, that means that this top wire is my load wire that is then taking electricity onto the light bulb from the switch. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate that load wire out of the way because I'm not going to connect it in this next step. So then I'm going to take my line wire that's supplying the power and I'm going to take my two pigtails that I made and I'm going to combine them with that one line wire. The reason we are not combining the top black wire with these is because then there would just be constant power going to the light bulb and you wouldn't need a switch. So again, like the other steps, I'm just going to put those wires together 
Then I'm gonna take my lineman pliers, I'm just gonna start twisting them together. Then once I've got them started twisting, then I'm gonna take a wire nut and really tighten them down. And now that my black wires are all twisted together, now I can push those into the back of the box. So the first thing I'm gonna wire up is my outlet. Now this is a GFCI outlet and you really need to have these in any wet location. So for instance, out here in the shed, in a garage, kitchens, your bathrooms, you'll notice you have GFCIs in your bathrooms. And just anywhere that there's moisture, you need to have a GFCI outlet. And this particular GFCI also has, you see here where it says WR, that's for weather resistant. So if you were to be putting this on like the outside to where it's going to be exposed to all of the elements, you would need especially a weather resistant GFCI and not just a regular GFCI. I just happen to have this, so I'm gonna mount it in here. But if you were mounting this outside, you would also need a weatherproof box on top of it. Now on the back here, it designates where each of the wires needs to go on these GFCI outlets. So you'll see up here where it says line. This is where our line wires will go for the hot line wire and the neutral wire. The ones down below this yellow sticker would be for load. That's if I was gonna have outlets on down the line that I wanted to have protected, I would then connect the wiring going to those down there. But in this case, this is gonna be the only outlet. Also with these outlets, instead of having to create curls to go around the terminals, they actually just slide right into these holes and then you tighten it down and it clamps down on top of the wiring. But I like to make sure that I've got enough wiring to where I can just barely see it out the front here but to where I don't see a whole lot of copper on the back part where it enters. But I also don't want my insulation from the wiring getting up underneath of what clamps down on top of the wiring because then I'm not gonna have a good connection. And on this particular one, the terminal screw for the hot side or the line side is black and the neutral side is the normal silver color. And then of course on the bottom is a ground screw. So I'm just gonna insert it in underneath of this brass colored clamp then once I've got it inserted into the clamp, then I can just tighten it down tight. Once I've got it in, just give it a pull to make sure it won't pull out. Next, I'm gonna connect my lone white neutral wire over here underneath of the silver terminal. And again, this is going in the line portion of the outlet. So I'm just gonna insert it into that clamp like I did with the ground wire, and then I'm just going to tighten it down. And again, give it a nice pull, just make sure it won't come out. Now I'm gonna flip it over. And now I'm gonna take this black line wire and put it up underneath of this black terminal screw. So again, just slide it into the clamp. Once it's seated correctly, then I can just tighten it down like I did the rest. All right, so now my GFCI outlet is all wired up and I can now connect it into the box. All right, so now that just leaves us with one ground wire and two of these black wires. And again, the one down here on the bottom is my line wire and the top is my load. But with a light switch, they do have to have the curls on them to wrap around the terminal screws. So I just use my wire strippers to make the curls. And in most cases, you'll have these holes up here towards the top, or sometimes they're down towards the handle more to where you can stick the wire into them. And then you can make a nice curl to wrap around the terminal screws, like so. So as always, I'm gonna do my ground wire first. And I wanna make sure that my wires are wrapping around the terminals in a clockwise direction. That way, when I go to tighten it down, as I'm tightening it down, turning the screw in a clockwise direction, it's going to help promote pulling that wire in closer to the terminal to create a better connection. Now I can turn it over here to the other side where you see these brass colored terminals and I can connect my two black wires. So I know that this bottom black wire is my line bringing the electricity in and this top black wire is my load taking the electricity to the light bulb on a single pole light switch, it does not matter which one of these terminals I connect it to. But I personally like to put my line wire on the bottom terminal and my load wire on the top terminal. And just like with the ground, I wanna make sure that my hook is going around the terminal in a clockwise direction. And then just tighten down the terminals nice and firm. Now my light switch is all wired up, now I can push it back into the box and tighten it down. All right, so before I cover this up, I like to test to make sure everything is working. In case something is wrong, I can get into it easily and fix it. All right, so now that I've got power going back to this, now I'm gonna take my outlet tester and just make sure that everything is wired up correctly. But on this GFCI, first I need to push this reset button. Now there is power flowing into the outlets themselves. And you'll see down here at the bottom, there's this little green light. That means that it's working. So I'm gonna take my outlet tester just to make sure it's all wired up correctly. If it is, these two lights here on this side will light up. So that's good. And that's good. Now I need to check my switch to make sure that the lights are coming on. 
And sure enough, they work as well. So now I'm going to take my cover plate and tighten it down. Now, if you like electrical projects, I've done quite a few of them that you can view by going to my channel, or I'll put a couple of them right over here that you can click on and they will take you right to them. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.